thousands of hours working on it and improving it and developing science for it. Why? Why would anyone spend thousands of hours on open source application that anyone can copy, modify, rename, or even sell it? Well, because I was worried about the future of the internet. As the web hosting services are getting more and more centralized, I see three big problems we have to face. Censorship, central control of information, and internet attacks. This dangerous centralization makes the internet far more fragile than we are aware of. Just to give you two recent examples. A few months ago, Cloudflare, the biggest company offering protection against cyber attacks, potentially could have leaked, could have leaked passwords, private messages, and other personal information of 4 million websites. Then, five days later, one of Amazon's server farms went down, and as a result, thousands of websites became unavailable or very hard to reach. Security cameras stopped recording footage. Many smartphone applications failed to start. Someone even reported that his fish feeder stopped feeding his fish. <laughs> I strongly believe that because of this centralization, if someone really wanted to, our internet could be brought down. And no internet means no more flights, no more food in our supermarket, no more banking. Total chaos and confusion. We are absolutely not prepared for such a mega collapse. We have no plan B. <coughs> Over the past two and a half year, I was working on a plan B. And I realized that by fixing the centralized hosting problem, we were also able to fix the problems of censorship, central control of information, and internet attacks. So right now, if you want to create a website in a current internet system, you have to find a web hosting service and register an account there by entering your username and password and other personal details. And then your visitors will reach your site and your content from this web hosting provider server. This usually works well, but in this way you are exposed to, to government censorship and, and internet attacks, or the daily mood of your internet <coughs> provider's CEO. <coughs> this just happened last month, when the CEO of the Cloudflare said this after they shut down the far right connected site called the Stormer. I woke up this morning in a bad mood and decided to kick them off the internet. <laughs> it sounds pretty scary from a CEO of a company that was the 4 million websites. Right? Even he admits no one should have that power. And one of the employers, employers asked, asked him, is this the day the internet dies? <laughs> On ZeroNet, you can create a site without having to trust, pay, or even contact a web hosting company. On this peer to peer network, the sites are hosted by the visitors themselves. If someone visits a site, it got downloaded into his or her computer and starts serving it to other visitors. So it is completely decentralized, no one can limit access to it or, or delete it. The network is secured by the encryption and the digital signature of the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. This makes sure that no one can modify your site but you. But 
Let me show you how does it look like. So when you install the zero client on your computer, you're going to see this exact image. Uh, it, it causes some example applications I developed to showcase the feature of this side uh, of the network. For example, there is a simple blog where I usually post about uh, the development of the network or if there is any meetup. So, as you can see, we just visited the website on ZeroNet. Uh, works like any other website on current internet system, but it's not downloaded from a central server, but from the other visitors of the site. So if you can open this sidebar, and it should show a map, which is probably not ready yet. So maybe the WebGL is not supported in this browser. So right now we are connected to 11 other people who are currently serving this site. And, uh, and we have downloaded this site from them. I am not so good at using Touchpad. So this is a site. Uh, and you can see there is other comments. So it's not just a one-way communication, but your visitors can also comment on your, for example, your blog post. It's a two-way communication system. I think it's, it's very important to have this feature because uh, uh, right before the internet, there was no similar technologies before uh, possible. So it was a very important feature for me to this, this two-way communication. Because I think if you want the people to use peer-to-peer -peer networks, I think we should provide at least as good user experience as the people uh, used to using normal internet system. Uh, let's try it again, maybe. It's working now. Oh, okay. So, uh, here are the green bars we have connected right now, and we have downloaded this site from these, these peers. Uh, it, it takes some time until it uh, discovers all the peers that currently serving this site. So right now, there is only uh, 99 uh, discovered peers, and uh, around half of them are on the Union Union Network, which is basically the Tor network that provides anonymity. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer network that also works in the Tor network. So if someone wants to hide the uh, identity and, and the IP address, then they can do it by using the Tor network, which is also, I think, a very important uh, feature because it allows, us, allows the people who are uh, living behind the uh, uh, government-supported firewall to connect this peer-to-peer -peer network. So as you can see, there is some some nodes are well, Europe and, and America. I mean, North America I mean. And, uh, and China. So this is just a blog, but there are other example applications. For example, there is a forum, which is kind of like a simple Reddit-like system. It works like any other forum system. Someone can create topics and others can, can uh, comment on that. And uh, there is some interesting uh, conversations. But I think it's not my role to, to choose what should be allowed and what should not. And since this is a peer-to-peer Network, as you can see, it's still downloading the, the content from the zero touch site because every user has his or her own file. So, so 
the first visit of the science could take a, bit, a little bit longer than using the usual, usual internet system. But after that, if you have downloaded the, the previous comments and the previous the user data, then it, the, all the pages are loads up instantly. Even if you don't have any internet connection, because it's all stored in your computer. So basically, you don't need internet connection for browsing the, the sites you have visited before. And you can also create new com comments, for example, on, 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 on a forum. And when your internet connection came back, it automatically got published to the, to the internet and for the other users. But if you want to create a new site, it's also very simple because there is a built-in clone feature, which is that's it. You just create a new zero site with two clicks. You don't have to find a web hosting provider because your visitor is going to host your site. And um, the other important thing is this. Very, you can see it, but believe me, this is a real Bitcoin address. So since we are using the same cryptography as the, as the Bitcoin network, it means uh, every zero net site is also a Bitcoin address. So when you create a zero net site, you also create a Bitcoin address. So if someone sends Bitcoin to this address, your site address, then you can pick it up by using the same private key as you're using to find the, the content of your site. So you can import this private key directly to your Bitcoin client and it's going to show up the, the donations you, you got on your site address. It's basically it's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a side effect. So it's, uh, it's, it, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> it's just a side effect that we are using the same encryption and the, and the same technology as, as, as Bitcoin. So these are the basics of the network. And um, yeah, as you can see, you can follow the content of the site you have visited before in this uh, newsfeed, which is, I think, also helps the decentralization. Because uh, if you have, for example, visited uh, uh, hundreds of blocks, you don't have to click every every day what's new what what blog has has new content because you can follow the new blog post here in this uh, news feed feature and you can choose what you want to see. So, for example, if you want to see follow comments on this post on this uh, topic, then you can just click on that, and as you can see, it it's going to be followed by in the, in the news feed. And another thing I want to show you that in the past two and a half months, I was working on Big Five support and it's finally ready. So I'm going to publish it uh, later today or uh, probably not later today because after the meet meetup we're going to have some uh, beer or something. But <laughs> But in the following days, I'm going to publish it, but I can show it to you, and I hope it's working, because this is the first time I'm showing this, this feature. So this is the showcase site for this feature, the Big Five support, because until now, there was a limitation on this network that uh, you, can't, you cannot share uh, any Big Fives, only, only, a, only a few megabytes. Uh, of, of site, uh, files that was supported. So it wasn't uh, really ready to, sh to, for example, share some videos in a peer peer way. Um, but, yeah, so let me show you and hope it works. So I clicked on it and it's working. And it came in peer to peer way. So, so it wasn't got downloaded from a uh, central server, but, but from, from the other peers who are currently serving it. Okay, so. so it looks like it's working. <laughs> and if you go back to this site, you can see it only downloaded 13 megabytes of 
the file. So it's fully support uh, video streaming and it's only download the, the part that uh, you are uh, watching. So it also supports the uh, skipping. And yeah, that's it. And if we go back, yeah, we, we see 17 megabytes of the downloaded from the total 40. Megabytes, but if you want to download the whole file, you just click on this, and that's it. We just downloaded the whole file. And we can do it with the others, other files. And so we just downloaded a bunch of megabytes of stupid videos and uploaded. And yeah, so this feature is going to be rolled out in the next few days. Uh, there will be questions after, so don't forget your question. Uh, after the presentation, I'm going to do some questions and answers part. So, yeah, as you can see, it's, it looks like it's working. Um, I'm happy. <laughs> and yeah, so it's coming soon. So, as you can see, browsing this network is, feels like using any other website in a granting the system. But this way, we don't need web hosting companies. And it, the network itself gives protection against cyber attacks because if you have a site with 100 visitors, then it means your site is hosted in 100 computers around the world. So if someone wants to take down your site, then they have to take down these 100 computers at once. And since there is no backend, every site is 100% transparent. So there is no secret in your network. And I think it's, it's also very important that it offers the exact same Zero cost infrastructure and no coordinating to anyone around the world, regardless his or her social or financial situation. So it is web 3.0? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not web 3.0. Instead, I would call it decentralized web 0.1. Sure. <laughs> Maybe 0.2. There is lots of use cases that will be hard to do this speed to free way, but there is many that could work. And it does work. So instead of seeing it as a replacement for the current internet system, we should see it as a new kind of web. As the birds has not replaced reptiles when they hover, but became a new kind of life form. So right now this application is mostly used by people we living in areas where the internet censorship affects their daily lives. They can be jailed or tortured for posting criticisms of the government. They have blogs, <coughs> forums, and a Twitter-like social site all running on the internet. Maybe you think this is a problem of some far countries in the East or who knows where, but in the reality, two thirds of the internet population are living in areas where these, so living under government censorship. And it's especially scary for me watching the latest happenings here in Hungary. And I think even if you don't care about the freedom of press or the uh, freedom of speech, I'm pretty sure you care about fairness. I think we should have tools that allow us to fight against things that we feel unjust, even if it's illegal to do. I have a friend who worked for a band, a pretty popular band in the 90s. The television and the radio play their songs. Basically, everybody knows their name. 
but still record selling went terrible. So they went to a publisher to ask why. As for was, it's because the black market. The people are not willing to pay three euro for a gazette, so they're buying it from different illegal sources. But don't worry, we will crash down on the black markets and we will force the people to pay the three euro price. Unfortunately, this is a very expensive fight, so we have to pay the lawyers and the high operating expenses. So we have to take 90% of your income. But don't worry, at the end we will force the people to pay that free euro price. The band now is it's not a viable option because the price is not fair. People can't afford to pay free euro from an 80 euro month income. So in the background, they started to copy, to copy their own records and illegally distribute it to the black market at much lower price. <laughs> I think without European networks like Napster or BitTorrent, we would not have, for example, Spotify today, because these applications forced the record companies to develop a new business model and offer music at much more fair price. Another thing is this, the paper. Right now, most of the scientific researchers are behind all this. You may think it's fine. The money goes to the researchers so they can pay their bills. But the reality is completely different. If you want to publish your scientific results on a major scientific site or newspaper, then you have to pay multiple thousands of US dollars. Or if you don't have that money, then you can transfer a copyright to the publisher and they will charge you. But they add the paywall and the money goes to them. Does it sound fair to you? Not for me. On P2P networks, the content are hosted by the people. It means if someone finds it socially and morally acceptable to provide free access to this knowledge, then he or she can contribute to this mindset by using these P2P networks. Because no scientist wants that paywall. Their job is to bring new knowledge to the world. They want to make it as widely accessible as possible. So, Abusing central control of information, censorship, and cyber attacks. Three reasons to find, use, and develop technologies that reduces centralization, gives the power to the people, and help to protect the originality of the internet. A local network that doesn't depend on any company or nation. Thank you. So now we have some, if anyone some, has some question, then they can ask me now. Okay. Hey, uh, I have a question about how the uh, two-directional uh, communication works. Suppose you have a blog and somebody leaves a comment, but we are not talking with your blog, but rather with a copy somewhere. Uh, how does the blog owner know that the, the comment is not tampered with in between? Okay, thank you. So the question was, how does the multi-user websites work? So, for example, if you have blog with comments, how does it work? Well, uh, since every user has his or her own, own file, so uh, which files only can be signed by the uh, private key that only he or she owns. So when he or she creates a new comment, then puts this puts in a new file and distributes it to the network. Uh, so sorry. So basically, the document is a file itself, and it has a signature. Okay. Yes. So so all the 
common, so, so, so one user, all the data that one user creates inside is stored in one file. So if you have, uh, for example, you are not limited to a command, but you can also, uh, it, it can be any kind of interaction, for example, uh, upload or, or new published video or, or something like that. Okay. So your question. about the fact that everything runs on existing infrastructure. So I think this is the weak point of the whole thing that, for example, any government or whatever just has to shut down the DNS or the existing infrastructure and, and we are kind of still stuck where we are now, right? So is there any step further we can take, for example, um, Peer-to-peer hardware, maybe an app on your phone, so that the millions of Android phone users will all be part of the system. Um, well, that's just popped into my head, but I don't know if there's something like this something to do it. Can we step further? Yeah. So, so the question was, uh, is it possible to, to make it independent from the current infrastructure of the internet? Well, it, it can be possible, but it, it's out of the scope of this project. So that's one level lower. So it's it's possible. So we have to start from the bottom up. Um, well, there is lots of other projects that are already try to solve this problem and doing it with great progress. So. Um, Transfer the current uh, 
the content to this script in the way. So my question is kind of mobile and it's a bit of a host. So that's it, can the phone be part of this bit of connection? Yes, uh, it could be possible, but, uh, but it has some problems. For example, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer -peer internet requires a persistent connection. And then uh, mobile phones close down or more than most of the connections when they go offline or, or go standby mode. So because of that, it's that really the last thing. And also, uh, so we already have a working on a client for Android, which is working. But uh, unfortunately, in the latest versions of what Android are, are going to close down the background processes. So it's getting uh, harder to, to implement zero in mobile phones. And, and unfortunately, the iPhone is even more restrictive than the iOS. Um, but I think with jailbroken phones or, or some modified operating systems, it could be possible. Maybe you could try to make your own operating system. <laughs> Just an idea. Thank you. Hey. So, I was interested. How did you get around that issue with uh, supposedly sites could only be several megabytes, but now you can have really large files? Yeah, so. By default, sites are, are restricted to 10 megabytes. So, but, but on top of that, you can define optional files, which is only downloaded if the client wants to. So for example, if I click on a link, and um, by that, I it, it start downloading that opt optional file. But you, when you visit a site, uh, it uh, can only download 10 megabytes of data. But the optional files are not uh, included in the, the 10 megabyte limit. So, so by that it's, it's possible to share bigger files or media files that are only optional and uh, not downloaded. <laughs> oh, and also, uh, I've heard of this technology of cryptocurrency called Sciacoin, where supposedly it's like decentralized storage. Uh, is there any way that could be integrated with the system? Well, I think it's possible to get integrated, uh, but I haven't looked it yet. And actually, I'm a little bit against the, the monetization or, or required payments because the Cycoin is basically, uh, you could say, a decentralized way of, of uh, Dropbox. So you have to pay for storage. Uh, and I prefer the freeway, <laughs> and you don't have to pay for for busting. And I think it would be um, not really lucky to, to to introduce paid uh, storage because then it would attract kind of uh, content that I'm not sure if I want to on the network. And maybe the people would ask, why would I store it free? Why, so so why, why should I store it free? Because if I can also ask money for it. So, so I think it would be bad for, for, for several, several reasons. And, and for me, for example, it's, it's morally acceptable to provide, for example, free access to these research papers. But it wouldn't be more acceptable to, to require payment for these uh, uh, research papers. Oh, I was just thinking because uh, large files are really hard to get lots of people to store. So as sort of a way to start things off. Yeah, but I think it's, it's working with, with, with torrent networks, so maybe it's going to work with, uh, with us. And uh, the storage is getting uh, cheaper and cheaper. So hopefully it will occur, but I definitely see there is a Maybe in the future we're going to implement uh, Sycoin or, or some similar technologies. And plus, that's also decentralized. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you.
Hi. Um, so this might be a silver question, so you should stop me uh, if it is. Uh, so I was wondering, is it possible to traverse the entire zero network, uh, some of a web crawler, and if so, does that make vulnerable to some sort of attack? Uh, what do you mean exactly? So, so is it discovering the other side that yeah, works? Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. Um, well, right now it's, it's not really possible to discover all the sites. So there could be sites that I don't know about on the network. So I don't see it as a uh, attack service or attack possibility. But even if you do, I don't see any problem with it because you can also you can encrypt the site so anyone can could download it. But if, since if they don't have the decryption key, then they can't really do anything with it. I think that's the most, most uh, secure way. Do you envision something like a zero net uh, Google variant if uh, the, the network grows to be very large? Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> um, so you think about search engines or yeah. something like that? Well, it's, it's, a, well, it's a different uh, it requires different kind of uh, synchronization techniques to, to create a bigger database and synchronize it in a beautiful way. Uh, I think there is some project that tried to solve this problem, but it's, it's a completely different uh, uh, problem. So maybe in the future it could be possible, uh, but right now I think it, with the current infrastructure of, of ZeroNet, it, it, it would be hard to do in a, in a huge search engine. Yeah, so if you create a site without using Tor, then they can see your IP address. So they can. Where, 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 where is this? Where can someone see the address? Um, basically, in your client, uh, there is well, there is a internal uh, address called first text. So basically I can just click here and see all the IP addresses that currently discovered by this client. Um, yeah, so so if you're using it without the Tor network connection, then it's, it's relatively easy to, to find out who is. Um, Here you can see the list of the sites you're currently hosting. So here is another site, and you just click on it, and you can see the IP addresses and the four addresses that are currently serving this site. So, but if you have a site with uh, lots of visitors, then it's, it's really hard, really hard to to find out who is the real owner. Ah, so, so you don't know who is so, the creator. No, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's very hard to, to find out if you have, uh, for example, 100 uh, hosts in your site. So, so I can't tell who is the real owner of the site. But if you just created a site, probably you're only going to serve it. So it's, it's easy to find out. Okay, and then we talk, because I, I, read, I read that, that with, uh, in this picture, and then it doesn't work okay with the... Uh, yeah, so, so basically, ZeroNet is uh, not using the BitTorrent protocol, 
So be, and because of that, it's not vulnerable with the same attack as, uh, as the BitTorrent has. So as far as I know, if you are using Tor, then you are safe. How much storage does it use on your computer if you use ZeroNet? And how much will it use once it, it becomes more widespread? Uh, so the question was how much resources using ZeroNet? Yeah, well, just how much space does it take on your computer? Well, it's, it just depends on how many sites we have visited before. So it just depends on... Uh, so you only serve the site you have, you have visited before and you have not deleted. So if you, if you just visit some site, then it's just a few megabytes. But if you are visiting thousands of websites, then it could be uh, a few gigabytes. And can, can that be limited? So if you use it every day, can you limit how much it will? Can you make uh, sure it doesn't take over your computer? Uh, well, yes. So here is an option. And uh, by default, zero net using uh, 20% of your free space, but you can change it by picking it up, so it's 10%. 10% <laughs> of your free space, and uh, if it reaches the limit, then it deletes the, the most seeded website. Uh, sorry, the most seeded uh, files. So it automatically deletes uh, the files that, serve, that is served by uh, the most people. So this, this make sure that uh, nobody, uh, that the files are going to disappear. I'm sorry, by free space, do you mean uh, of all the hard drives? No, only the hard, hard drive you have installed in the So we are on, that we are running. So it's, it's completely uh, portable. So it's only save files within its, its folder, its folder. So it doesn't save all uh, around or I just only the directory of this time. If I start a page uh, with the internet, uh, am I protected against 51% attacks uh, via the Bitcoin network, or the computer is actually hosting my page? So uh, my question is regarding that if there's a page freshly, freshly released running with 50 users, if someone comes in with 60 computers connecting it, can we do a 51% attack or not? Well, it's no problem for, for this network because it doesn't use blockchain. Uh, basically, you can can change the site if you don't have the private key. So, so it's uh, the same attack uh, as the Bitcoin network has it not advised for this network. Okay, so that was the questions part, uh, and I'm going to be here after the uh, following talks. So if you have more questions, please reach me and I want to answer them if I can. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Tomash, for the presentation. Hi, my name is David, um, and along with Clemens over there, I've uh, developed a couple of uh, ZeroNet websites, and the sites that I'm about to show you are, of course, they stand alone by themselves, but they also uh, serve as a proof of concept to certain ZeroNet features and like optional files or merge sites and, uh, and so on. So, a little bit about us. Uh, we discovered the ZeroNet about a year and a half ago and we were really ex immediately excited with the possibilities and we wanted to see how far we can uh, develop in this platform because before it was uh, more simple sites and not so uh, you know, usable in, in the sense like in the clear net. So I, mean, the, uh, I would show a couple of websites that we built to explain my point here. Uh, this is 
So the first uh, site we developed is called IFS, which is short for uh, Interplanetary Farm System. No. Intergalactic. Yes. Ah, here, Intergalactic File System. And this is, as you see, uh, it's in its core a file sharing site with uh, display capabilities. So I'll demonstrate a couple of things. For example, we have this video here of funny cats. And uh, you see we have players that, uh, I won't show it until the end here, but we have players for, uh, we support uh, four types of content uh, currently. So as you see, videos, um, audios as well, uh, show you some of the games. We have also a couple of emulators here. Of course, it's a fun and all, but the, the point is to, to show how, how deep we can go with this. So which uh, game do I choose here? Let's see. Like this. Like these games, for example, the Amstad. I won't play it right now, but you can understand the point here somehow. This is a game. We go back here. Unfortunately, we can't. We although it says books. Uh, due to some restrictions with the iframe, we still haven't found a solution to actually show them. But every file here is downloadable, and you can view it on your uh, computer as well. Now to answer a question that was asked before, somebody asked about how, how do you prevent it from taking over your computer. Every item here that you see, uh, once you view it, or play it, or click on it, then it's downloaded. As long as you don't view it or use it, it's not, it's not going to use space. And eventually you can also remove them if you want. But that's, uh, that's the point of this site. Now, uh, it's important to, to clarify also, this, this site itself, when you, when you download it the first time, it doesn't go over the 10 megabyte uh, limit because of the use of the optional files. And as you see, there are around 600, 620 files on this website, games, pictures, videos, and all. But unless you actually decide to play them, there's not going to be, not going to take space from your computer. Um, so, just to show another thing. By the way, these all these files, all these uh, items here, some of them we've that we've added as a, as an example. But as you can see here, we have a lot of videos from China. We have no idea how they came. <laughs> this one is in download. And a lively discussion over there. As you can see. The funny thing about it is that we basically only advertised the sites on a couple of blogs on ZeroNet and then it started just to grow by itself exponentially. So this is, uh, this is IFS, the file sharing uh, website. The, the, the next website site, sorry, is uh, our quasi Reddit clone, which, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's like Reddit, we have all these channels here, um, live discussions and whatnot, uh, I was, sorry, I skipped over the phase, I wanted to show how it's uh, quite simple to upload files and use this uh, Use this website. So right now, using this account, I'll log out first to explain. When you just when you just visit the site the first time, you don't have an account because we issue a site-specific certificate, so it would be stay anonymous overall. So because I already have one, I'm gonna log in here. And I'm gonna go to my channels. Each user can have multiple channels, which could be about different topics and subjects. I'll just show how I upload a new video. It's quite simple, really. Let's upload this funny cats again. Now, we still haven't implemented the Tamas Big Fast support, so there is no visual tracking of uh, the progress of the file. But, uh, yeah. Uploads relatively quickly. 
Uh, of course, you can do a lot of things with the file itself. You can edit, add a poster, image, and it, it depends really on the on the content type that you wish to use. But this is uh, pretty much it. Simple to use, and uh, in order to participate, you only have to click and create an account, and then you can post content and so on. So, uh, yeah. The next, what, the next it's slide. Also, is it's, it's also important that um, anything you click, you see it uh, has a green border, so you know what you have visited before, and then you see the um, the number of peers that the file is shared. So Thank it's you. easy to to see what you have in your cache and what to repeat what he said, uh, the green frame around some of the objects indicate that you have downloaded that file, and it also said like gives you the number of peers for each file. Those the grayed out ones are the ones that you that the user hasn't downloaded yet, so there's not no peer information about it. And um, yeah, so these are yeah. So that, this was IFS our file sharing proof of concept website. It needs to, uh, I, I want to um, explain a bit because the, the site itself does not host any content. We use here the feature of ZeroNet that's called Merge Sites. And then the, the, the principle is that you have a site for the front end that, that displays everything. It, it holds the video players or the game emulators and whatnot. And you got another other sites, could be one, could be multiple one. We name them clusters. But these serve as the as the data data storage for the for the site. It has all the user files or the all the games or the videos and all the files that are viewed. So it's possible here to we, we have completely separated the front end from the back end. So if somebody, for example, would like to create a different front end or to expand on this one, you can just simply clone this website, and configure it a bit, and then he has his own his own IFS or what he will choose to call it. Uh, the, the logic here is to avoid any kind of censorship or moderation. As you can see, we have this moderation button, which I, I will not turn off, <laughs> due to some... Uh, because when something is free and without censorship, you'll have sometimes people uploading weird stuff. But as the owner of the site, I can decide which content I want to display or not. Uh, each owner would have this admin panel. Quite simple, really, to, it's, that uh, you can hide or show channels or, uh, or specific uh, videos or items. So that was IFS. And all the sites that I showed, they worked on the same principle of having the back end and the front end separated. But it's very important, this is not um, censorship, because you cannot delete the file. So this is just the front end. So if uh, someone decides, oh, this is uh, content is okay for my front end, uh, which we put in the FAQ, what we don't want to see, and someone can clone just the front end, and he cannot uh, hold the content hostage, because those are on the clusters. So anyone can do a clone of the front end and can specialize, uh, uh, can do his own uh, website like um, certain um, series uh, uh, only and just show the content that he thinks is appropriate for his or her front end. Exactly. It's also possible to, to clone the back end, to have your own, yeah, your own data storage cluster and you can set up your own rules. Of course, Every owner can gets to decide what kind of content he would use on the site, but as Clemens uh, mentioned, there's, there's, there isn't a possibility of deleting content. Uh, okay, so the next site, which is this approach as well, is this Reddit clone. Um, you can see this uh, different channels, different topics. We have all of this, all of these. Uh, yeah, we, all of these uh, topics are, are new. Uh, we, we added a few test uh, topics when we started the website, but that basically it just runs by itself right now. Let's, um, let's see. For example, we have this. We have this uh, <laughs> here. The debate on whether you can vote. You can vote on the topic. 
This, so this site utilizes the same the same approach. We have the backend separated. We have a dedicated cluster, as we call it, and we have this front end. Again, somebody already cloned the website this particular site uh, to change it as he sees fit. As sees fit. Uh, again, it's against against censorship and whatnot. We, of course, we want every owner wants to have something else on the site, but that's to the owner's decision. So um, a nice feature of this site is that we can embed uh, content from uh, we can embed content from uh, the previous site IFS. I'll demonstrate here. Uh, test. This is a test. Test. Here we have the embed URL. If you noticed in the other the previous website, so on the topic view, we have this embed URL. You copy it, paste it here, create the topic, and you can play the piece of download it. You can you can embed the, the content. So you don't even need to upload the files. Basically, IFS can just uh, serve as, a, as the file hub that, that you draw off. You can see we got already a lot of uh, users here talking about whatnot. Um, and that was um, our zero vote. The next website that we developed is called ZeroNet Central. Well, you know, not the most original name. But it's supposed to be, but it's a depository. If anybody remembers, like demos in the beginning of the internet, we used to have just directories of websites. So we strive to do this also to somehow to collect the sites to create some kind of a interconnectivity. This in this site, as well as the others, again it uses this uh, merge sites feature, which means the the content here is not uh, served on the website itself, but in another cluster which of course can be cloned and used as, as well, uh, as the owner sees fit. Um, yes, we have here the cache, the one cache, the, one cache, the proxies, we can favor it. Uh, of course it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a new site, so we don't have so much content, but the, the goal here is to uh, create some kind of interconnectivity between the different uh, zero net users to to have more traffic, more people, more interest. Um, so these are the sites we've developed. As I said, they are standalone sites. We, we use them, and a lot of a lot of users do visit and contribute content. But they are for us also a proof of concept. As I said, to uh, to see how far we can use the file, the optional files, the merge file, the merge sites, all the features of ZeroNet, to see how we can make it more than just basic uh, little sites. That are the tests and to see how we can actually make content that the uh, users would choose to come back to and to participate and to expand. And uh, yeah, that was our insights. If uh, anybody has any questions. Is it on? Sure. Yes. yes. So uh, my question is that I understand that files are content addressed because that's how that's how multiple peers can store it and yeah. everybody can be sure that it's the same file. Mm -hmm. However, with the directories, they change all the time, right? So where the state of a particular site is stored? 
So when you reference a site here, yeah. obviously it can change over time. It can point to to a to newer and newer content, right? So they, they can change it. Where the state of it have it having been changed is stored? How who is responsible for updating the state of individual sites? Uh, you, you talk about this site specifically. Well, any site. So zero net site is not a static content, right? It can be changed. Okay, we have the user data that uh, all these changes, but the, the site files itself is, um, I mean, it is static in a way. I mean, when we talk about the, the user files, we're talking about the files that are in the data directory. Each user, each user uh, has a, his own directory in the in the data in the clusters. So and where's the directory? The directory. Okay, so this is IFS. It uses two clusters, um, and each cluster, which is a site by itself, we demonstrate. This is the front end. Of course, it's just to show. One second. This is the front end of the cluster. It just shows the, the, the some info that we chose to show here. But in its in, in its site in the in the physical directory, the display here. We have this data, that, can you see it? We have this data directory. Here in the users, we have all of these different directories. This is where the files themselves are stored. So each user has his own file, has his own directory, and when a, a user chooses to view or play an item in one of these uh, sites, he will download this directory and the, and the specific from file. From, uh, from the peers. So let's say I have my own directory. Mm -hmm. I change something there. Yeah. Take the file, add the file. Yeah. All this information is on the Not the file itself, but the fact that it has been changed. Yeah, so zero is not uh, hash based. So so the sites are not uh, the site address is not based on the content of the site, but it's it's uh, it's, it's 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 a public address. So basically when you access a site, you you're only going to accept modifications that is signed by that uh, private key that is uh, comes from that uh, public address. So, so it's not hash based, but it's uh, the content is addressed by the owner public key. The public address. <laughs> so, if you change the content, the, the address is going to be the same because uh, the, the hash of the file are not. Uh, and how does the network know which version? Um, well, when you, you connect to a site, you're going to ask random peers and you put the US one. So every content is uh, uh, timestamped. Well, but, uh, but, only, but only the, the site owner can, can, can create a, a valid signature for, for a content. So, so, so you can uh, so so only the site owner can can create a, a, a fake timestamp. So there is no no real reason to do that. Oh, this is a question. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should uh, uh, do the questions after the presentations. So please don't forget your questions, and we're going to have a, another. So. Thank you. And uh, do you want uh, a break now, or we have two other presentations, or or you are ready for the new information? <laughs> okay. So, anyone wants break? Hands up. Okay. We're going to take a, a five-minute break, or let's make it ten minutes. So then, meet you there here in ten minutes.